Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What are timeline curves? This is basically a recap of what the curves are, which has been covered in other videos, except this is how they apply to the timelines themselves and how we might use them. So let's jump right into this. Inside of our timeline, which is right here, we have different curves. You can have multiple curves inside your timeline, and that is going to be a different output track for each one. Now there are four different curve types. You may only be used to the three that are our normal curves, but there is an additional event track specific to timelines. Now if we're looking at them, we have our float track. That's our basic track that gives us back a value. Let me do this right here. It's going to give us an individual value at an individual time point. And in this case, I'm going to go from zero to one, uh, this is five at one second, down to zero. We have a vector track. A vector track is three different points of data over time. So in this case, I have an X, a Y, and a Z value that start here, proceed to different values and different key points, and then the output at each time will give me those results. So at one second, I'm going to get back this for an X, this for a Y, and this for a Z, or X, Z, and Y if I'd actually done these in order. And if we're looking at our outputs, it gives us out a vector. Remember, vectors three float values. We have a color track. So if I was to go down here, you'll notice the color track doesn't have our zooms because the color track is basically going to be just this down here. It is going to be a color value at a certain time and an opacity value at a certain time. So in this example, I have my color going from this color to this color and these opacity stops. And you can easily, just like any other curve, right click and add key. And here we do have the show curves up here, but you can uncheck it. For the most part, the curves isn't really necessary when you are using a color because the color itself has this bar at the bottom. So we're gonna keep that off. We do ha technically have a fourth one. Now that is our event curve, or technically not a curve, it's an event track. That's created right here. An event track will simply fire off at a certain time an event pulse. An execute will fire on your execute event track wire and whatever you've told it to do will happen. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter where it's at in here. It could be at any value. All that matters is it's going to fire off at this time, this time, and this time in my example. Let's compile and save and let's look at our outputs. So in this one, the only thing we're gonna have hooked up from the start is our scalar parameter value for our missive. And you should get used to this one now. We hit G, it pulses up, and it pulses down. Every time I hit G, it's basically going to play from start, and it's going to repeat. Because I'm taking my float track, outputting the value, and plugging it into here. It's a simple value between 0 and, well, technically it's a value between whatever and whatever, and it can be negative just like a normal float curve. Let's go ahead and plug in the update to our, our vector. What happens here is... Watch our item, and you'll notice it goes over, and it moves. And every time I repeat, it moves. All I'm doing each update is setting the location of that sphere to the new location. And remember, if we open this up, if it will cooperate, there we go. Uh, searching, here we go. Let's put this back. Our vector is basically saying, hey, start at this value, go to these values, and then go to these values. You'll notice our X never changes. Our Z basically goes up, stays still, and then flat the rest of the time. And our Y changes the entire time. And of course, we could adjust this as needed. We could tell our Z to technically go down to like this, and then go up. And we save it. We play, and we're going to get down and then up. Because we're simply outputting this value, well, these technically these three values, and telling it to set the location. Third one's going to be our color track. This one's pretty simple. We're basically telling our image to adjust its color and opacity. Now by image, well, if we hit play and I hit G, I have a UMG widget on my screen. If we were to simply go into 
Uh, let's close that down. Let's go into our example again, timeline. I simply have an image that goes over the entire screen and I have it set to basically off to start. And my color track is saying, hey, we're gonna go from off. We're gonna have a little bit of an op clear, transparent red, and then we're gonna go back to off over time. So it kind of simulates like what you'd think of like a damage hit. Hey, ugh, oh, that's T, wrong button. I got hit. So it's like a little bit of a pulse and then slows back down. So you could simulate someone getting hit. Maybe this is the heartbeat as they're low in life. Whatever you'd like. You basically can drive a color value into anything else. And it just gives you an output of a color track. Now our last one, and I'm going to keep our color track hooked up to this one because it works well, is our event track. Every time our event track fires, so in this case, if I go back to our event track, I'm going to say at, you know, 0.26 fire, 0.78 fire, 1.35 fire. So these time values fire off a pulse and fire off the event track. My event track is basically saying, hey, you're losing 25 health, so update the text. So in the bottom right, you'll notice we have 100. I'll fire it off. And you notice we basically lost life. Because every time that timeline ticks, I'm telling it to do something. You can have it do whatever you want, obviously. But this is a simple example of I have three events that are going to fire off during this timeline. And each time, it's going to basically adjust the player's health. And you can notice over time, it does just that. And of course, because there are points, again, I could do... I could do this one up here, I could do this one down here, and I could do this one, you know, right here. Whoops. Save and compile and play. And even though they're at up and down, they're still going to fire off. So again, just simply setting these at a value of zero probably makes it easier to find on your t uh, curve itself. Value means nothing, it's only the time period for an event track. Now, let's see, we have one last thing. This is gives us the ability to have a curve internally and adjust how it works. Now we do have the ability to have an external curve. So let's say I wanted my float track to be a different curve. Let's say it's a curve that I've already created. Like right here, I have a different curve that I've already created externally. You can go into here, tell it to use an external curve. We can either browse for an external curve like this, or we can use external curve once we have one selected, like this. That was not what I meant to do. Oh, crud. Well, didn't mean to do that. Let's go ahead and hit X. Well, that's a good way to, to get rid of it. Um, that was an accident. I meant to do it over here. So now we have our external curve here. You notice when it's using an external curve, we can't adjust values. You can't adjust values because it's an external curve. You can hit the X to convert back to an internal curve which I've done here. Again, you can select one and do that. Or if you just simply want to add a new one, you can do add selected curve asset like this. And it's going to go ahead and add as a brand new output. So in this case, you see timeline float curve, event graph, timeline float curve. The name of that was timeline float curve and automatically added it as a new output. Let me go ahead and delete that. Go back to what we had before. We have our four outputs. Now that's how to use a curve in design time inside the timeline. That's how to use a curve externally using a timeline float curve value and putting it in using the external curve. But there's one more way. We can actually change the curve at runtime. We have a set float curve node. This will basically take in a target. So this is my timeline that I'm using right here. It'll take in a new curve. So set, I'm setting a float curve, it's expecting a float curve, but it's not just the set float curve. You do have the, it'll stop, other curves in here, uh, which I don't have, uh, let's go over here. Here we go. We have the, it's hiding for me, give me a second. Here we go. Set linear color curve, set float curve, and then we should have a set vector curve right here. So you do have, and I'll just drag them in so I can show you. There we go. So you do have three curves, one to handle each one. 
And if you're worrying, if you're curious about the event one, it is a float curve, so you can use the set float curve for an event track. But here's how I could change the vector curve at runtime, the linear color curve at runtime, and the float curve at runtime. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and run our normal float curve without any changes. This is the curve we have built in. If I hit F, whoops, G, it's going to go ahead and give us this little bit of a pulse. Now, it's going to give us that pulse because I screwed up. Let's go to our float track. Let's adjust our values because I'm a dumb dumb. I accidentally reset these values when we were in there importing because I imported the wrong. Um, whoops, that would meant to be time. Yeah, time of one. Okay, yeah. I imported the wrong um, curve to the wrong spot. So let me just fix this. Basically, all I did was turn our curve, whoops, unselect, our curve back to normal. Now we have that curve we expect. And when we hit play, we get the result of fading, uh, glowing, going from off to on to off. So that's what we want. Let's say we don't want that. Let's say we want something else later. But we have a curve we've already designed in here, and this curve simply goes on to off. We can use our set float curve node. So let's go ahead and hook this up to our finished. We're going to run through our update. We're going to go on and off using our normal internal curve. Then when we finish, we're going to tell it to change the curve. We're going to change it to that curve that I've already designed right here. And then we're going to say, OK, that curve, what are you going to replace? Which output are you going to replace? And this is where it's important to note. You need to put in the correct name. Float track right here, float track is the output I want to change. And then after I change it, I'm telling it to play from start. So basically this is going to just loop indefinitely, but with a different curve. And I'll show you what I mean. Play our normal curve, change the curve out, and then now you'll notice it's changed out to the new curve. And it's basically doing the little bit of a pulse rather than our smooth pulse. Because I've told it to basically change it to that fast pulse and then play from start. It plays from start, it updates everything properly, and then it repeats itself indefinitely. This is kind of, I basically built in a loop right here. But the point was it ran one curve at start and then changed to a different curve. What I mean by this being correct, let's say we change this to float track with just a C because I didn't pay attention enough and made a mistake. We'll hit play, we'll run the example, and you'll notice we have our smooth curve again. We no longer have our sudden change in the pulse. We don't have our sudden change because I told it, okay, go ahead and use this new curve as this track name. And now anytime this track name right here, float track with just a C, is updated, it's going to change the value. But our correct one is float track with a CK. So technically, we basically put a curve in there that doesn't exist for an output and nothing happens. So you got to make sure that it's correct. So setting float curve, target the correct timeline, target the correct new curve you want to put in here, and then tell it which track you're going to now replace when this timeline runs. Because remember, we're not changing the outputs. We're not changing the speed or anything like that when we do this. All we're doing is saying, hey, the curve you have in here now, this curve right here, we're going to go ahead and change that curve to this curve. And we're going to make sure that this is the appropriate track name to replace our track name right here. That is going to pretty much wrap up our timeline curves video. Remember, we have four different curve types. The event track is a float track for all intents and purposes. And the event track doesn't care where those values are. It simply cares where the time is at. All of our other outputs, we can again drive anything we want with them. We have the ability to change any of our curves at runtime by using the set blank curve node. One for float, one for linear color, and one for vector. Remember, your track name has to be correct, and you have to make sure you target the correct timeline if you have more than one. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our timeline curve nodes.